everyone here really enjoyed the movie, the starters. Mm -hmm. um, can you go ahead and just tell us how you initially got involved in the project? What what drew you to the role, Kathy? Oh, um, I was uh, I was at the LA airport. I was coming back from Hawaii. I had just uh, been working on Hawaii Five-O, and um, I got off the plane with Jerry Busey, and I was meeting another guy, and. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Lewis. Uh, oh gosh, the name just went right out of my mind. The line producer on the on the film uh, that I did with Dennis, uh, uh, Lewis. Uh, what's his first name? Oh, it just went right out of my mind. Anyway, he and Dennis, and he was Dennis. He worked on the Easy Rider with Dennis, and uh, he was Dennis's best friend. And uh, I had worked with him on Stuntman with Peter O'Toole awesome. and Barbara Hershey and Stephen Westback and all those people. And um, he saw Dennis and Dennis stopped and he was watching. I had this real long fox fur coat up. And I was, I looked hot. I was really <laughs> very boozy, was adorable. And he was swinging me around, kissing me all over. And then I met another guy, and he was doing the same thing. And, and Paul Lewis, that's his name. Wow. Paul Lewis said to uh, uh, Dennis, said to Paul, who, who is she? And Paul said, oh, that's Sharon Farrell. I just finished working with her on Stunt Man, and she's been doing this and that and the other thing. And, and Dennis says, I want her to play my wife. So uh, he didn't really recognize me at the time. But when I got up, when I got up to uh, Canada, um, he, 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 kind of, he, he remembered me from before because I knew him way back when I was going with Dean Stockwell. And uh, uh, Dennis at the time was married to a lovely gal and I liked her. And kind of had a, a crush on Dennis and I thought he was wonderful. He was very artistic. Uh, his house was incredible. He had you know, it was it was extraordinary. He had a, a, a car wreck in the backyard. It, it was like a car. It was all overgrown, but it was like definitely a wrecked car. And it was like, that was his sculpture in the backyard was this wrecked car. And uh, he lived up in a very lobby da area, so a wrecked car was not the norm at all. <laughs> it was uh, quite extraordinary. And um, Brooke. Brooke, uh, Brooke, uh, Brooke Hayward, which is like me. And um, so uh, I went back. He didn't really, he didn't really remember anything, but he was so stoned and out of his mind during the whole thing. You know, was like I don't even know that we really even talked too much about our past. You know? So um, I, I got hired because I was in an airport and I was madly in love and I was happy and he saw me and you know it's like. When you're happy, good things come to you. <laughs> come to you, and this is what came to me. It was, it was, uh, it was just serendipity that he and Paul Lewis happened to be there, and he saw me. So. Awesome. Can you uh, talk a little bit about how uh, Dennis Hopper came to direct the movie? To go from oh, the um, from he was playing the husband, and when I first saw him up there, he was like this tough, pale and white and pasty, and he was wearing a suit. And uh, I mean, Dennis Hopper never wore suits. You know, he's not a suit. He's not a suit. And um, he he looked kind of frail and everything. And uh, we shot we shot our day's work and, and uh, we were all at daily. And Dennis was like complaining about everything. This wasn't shot right. You shouldn't have used that angle. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. And um, he just, he just said, you know, he said, you should let me direct this. I should be directing this movie. I mean, if you want to make any money, if you wanted to go to Cannes, if you want me to help you with this film, I'm starring in it, but I could really do something if I were directing it. And he just took over. The next day he was directing the film, and the, the, um, the uh, director stepped down and uh, was in a very good mood about the whole thing, happy to have Dennis take the reins, but Dennis just took over. Were there um, were there any big changes made in the script after Dennis took over? Well, the premise of the script was there was there was a the girl is molested by her father, and and the girl you know walks off into the 
you know, just leaves home. Mm -hmm. I think that was the script. And um, if Dennis had a, we, we met every morning in a trailer. First, we start out with a beer and a joint. You know, <laughs> and when you were in the Dennis, everybody's stoned, everybody's drunk, everybody's party. But that was, it was back when everybody was doing that, too. I mean, it was, um, it was a, it was, it was like carrying around a bottle of water today. <laughs> yeah, you coke, a little vial of coke, and, um, you know, you had a couple tabs of that in the back of your pocket, and, you know, that, that's the way we were. And, um, so, I can't remember what your question was. <laughs> uh, I'm, asking, uh, I'm asking how much changed after Dennis took over. Oh, well, we didn't know from day to day what was going to happen. But that, he, he said that that was the way, uh, you know, the guy that did uh, Eight and a Half and, you know, all of this, this very famous Italian director, this is the way he did it. He had his actors come in and nobody knew what they were doing. And we'd write the script, you know, from day by day. So we all had to make sure we were in that trailer every morning because if we weren't in that trailer, we, would be, we wouldn't be in the script. You know, we'd, you'd have the person who didn't show up that day standing in the corner, like just listening to everybody talk. And um, so it was quite an experience. It was fun. It, that part of it was fun because you never knew what was going to happen. But it got to be kind of, it got to be very dark. I mean, the film was dark and we got sucked and dragged into it ourselves, especially with all the drugs we were doing. Uh, the, movie, the movie is really dark, um, and you're, re you're really great in it. I, I guess I want to know, um, cause your, your character is difficult because she's very sympathetic, but she's also very just horrible and confused and messed up. Um, and I guess I was wondering, do you, do you recall any scenes in particular that were particularly difficult for you to like prepare for, or, or that were just difficult to film in general? You know, I can hardly hear no, you. No, no. <laughs> I, I, you were asking, you were saying something about my being sympathetic but horrible at the same time, <laughs> and that had to do with what? Oh, I was saying, I was saying the character in the movie is that way, and I guess I was, I was curious if you, uh, if you remember any scenes being particularly difficult to film, or uh, oh, oh, I, oh, character. yeah, difficult. Well, the drugs were made things difficult because I was kind of. I, you know, I did drugs, I smoked grass, I did coke, I loved all that. But I kind of like did that on the weekends, and when I was working, I didn't do that. And all of a sudden, I was in a position where this is the norm. So the h hardest part for me was I, I Dennis would shove amyl nitrate under my nose and then push me through a doorway. And and then I had to overcome that, that ugh feeling of animal nitrate and try to remember my life. <laughs> and so that was the hardest thing, was oh. like having to do drugs and work because you had, a double, you had a double problem because, you know, it's like you had to play a character, but here you are, you're, you're handicapped because you, you're like out of it in a way and you've got to like concentrate and focus so hard to like get into that character, which, which is kind of hard to do. You know, the drugs were the big problem. <laughs> and of course, it's like as the day went on, Dennis would start drinking and everybody would start drinking. And, and then things got like a little mean. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dennis was, you know, he was incorrigible. I mean, he, he, we were, we'd be working at, we'd be working at someone's home. I mean, we should, the, the house that you saw in the film, that's really... That was really someone's home. We came into their home, and we worked there. You know, Dennis was peeing on the floor. <laughs> Dennis would hold his phone like this and blow, and you know, his, 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 uh, what he, his, uh, not saliva, that, whatever he, he was, your snot would be flying all over the room. And these were people's home. This was a person's home. So that kind of thing just, oh, I don't know. It's like, um, we laughed. But, you know, underneath it, we didn't respect ourselves for laughing, and we really didn't like Dennis for doing what, the, what he did, because he was our leader. And, um, you know, we wanted to respect him, but, you know, how can you respect somebody who's running around on a motorcycle, late for every scene, 
um, because he's shooting somewhere or shooting up somewhere, and um, and then uh, you're waiting, 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 and then okay, he comes in and he, he has a hold and he's all excited. He's late, but he's got a great big pile of cocaine that we all go in and we give him a hundred bucks, you know, for a gram, and and you know he was our he Dennis was everything. He was our director. He was our writer. He was um, he was our dealer. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, the, the Canadians up in Canada, I mean, they were they were upset because he he brought he fired the Canadian actor and he brought in Don Johnson, uh, John, uh, uh, Don Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Don, uh, Don uh, Gordon. Dan Gordon. Don. Don Gordon. He brought in Don Gordon, and Don Gordon. We had to do a scene where uh, I think he watches me shoot up or something, and. Um, he he comes in and Dennis was gonna said I got I'm gonna I'm gonna have you, you do something really terrible really horrible. Well, Don Johnson got so nervous he got he got a fever blister. I mean he was just he was just beside himself. You know this is the guy who worked with Bullock with Steve McQueen and worked with all kinds of tough guys. But Dennis was scary because you just didn't know what he was gonna do. And what 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 he had me do was to shoot up and Don was watching and. He, because we were, I mean, she never shot. I mean, that wasn't part of the script. You know, so um, it was uh, it was on the dark side. It was definitely on the very dark, dark side of the room. <laughs> really was. I'm going to ask another question and then turn it over to the audience. Um, what was your impression of Linda Manns? Linda was... Uh, she was a little. She was like a little animal. She was. She was really from the streets of New York City. I mean, this girl was living in a really peculiar way. She had. A, I mean, I thought she was uh, 12 or 13, or 14. She was like 18 or 19 in that film. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, I thought she was a little girl, but just because she was just she was just small because she was just. She didn't have any food when she was a little girl. She was living literally on the streets, and a, um, a manager found her for, um, oh, there was a big movie that was a big flop. Uh, Days of Heaven? Yes. <laughs> yes, Days of Heaven. And um, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I thought, I don't think it was a flop in the, in the artistic sense, but it really expected you to make a lot of money right away, and I don't think it did. But um, Linda was, uh, she, my son came up to visit me, Chance, and um, Linda was like, she was touching his hair, and she thought everybody in Hollywood had blonde hair, and, you know, and he was this blue-eyed, little blonde, little cute kid, you know, and she thought that everybody, Linda wanted to go to Hollywood because she wanted, she wanted to, like, see all those Everybody who's blonde. She thought everybody was blonde in Hollywood. She was just like a real innocent. She was like a little animal. She was she was wonderful. Um, does anybody in the and audience have awesome. questions? Nothing about any of the things that Dennis pulled. She just was laughing. She just laughed her head off at it. Or, you know, he'd like, he terrorized me. <laughs> uh, does anyone in the audience have any questions? Zach, do you want to go? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, if anybody wants to ask a question, we can come up and just talk about it the camera. Hi. Well, I'm kind of curious about uh, the meeting in which you will discuss the fact that uh, CB is going to kill her parents. Like, how was that decided upon? Was it kind of an impromptu thing, or was it pretty well planned out? Because it wasn't uh, the original script, right? Uh, the, he was abusive. He was supposed to be, you know, raping his dog. Right. And uh, Dennis had her kill him, you know. And 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 because I was I was the mother. I mean, I I couldn't figure out how would I let this go on in my house because I mean I I knew that people who have abusive uh, you know parents that are raping their children, the mother really knows. I mean, there, there are signals from the child and signals from the heaven. The, from the father that this was going on. And my thing was she was just so such like such a little guy that I was afraid that she was I was I played my mother. I you know, it's like um uh, my mother is the kind of person who 
who said, you know, don't masturbate. It's better for you to go out and find a boyfriend because it's very dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my mother, you know, never get on top, you know, never let a man be new. And so I kind of like thought, oh, well, she wants to play the drums. She wears a leather jacket. I'm afraid she's a homosexual. You know, I'm afraid she's got sexual problems. And rather than have her have that, I would prefer, you know, uh, you know, a friend maybe inter introduce her to sex. Uh, a male friend of ours, which was Don Gordon, introduce her to sex in a very kind, sweet, loving way. I mean, I just, ju I was trying to figure out why would, would, would a mother do this? And I had to figure it out, but well, she's really stupid, you know. And she was educated and, uh, you know, was basically stupid. Yeah. Right. So, so that's, I, I, I played her. I played her like, uh, I played her like she was like she adored her husband. She loved her husband, but she liked other men too. And she loved to drugs, and she was worried about her daughter. And she didn't want her doing anything to herself, you know, or yeah. she would prefer her. And, and she didn't really want her to be with other boys or or that either. She would prefer her being with an older man. I don't know. It was like. Uh, it was, it, it's a hard, it's kind of hard to play a character that is so awful and yeah. so stupid and so uh, unaware of, of life and the way it's supposed to be, you know? Maybe if she had had, you know, I don't know, they were, that was a dark film. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a very, very dark film. Yeah, it is. I'm surprised you guys sat too long. <laughs> I've done a few of those, you know, it's like I did, uh, It's Alive, it was a dark film, and it was always a, a time in my life where I was so broke I just needed the money, you know, and um, some of the things that I, that I, I turned down, with, that I actually turned down were total mistakes, you know, I mean, I, I turned down the baby maker, and Barbara Hershey did that, and I turned down, I, I turned down a, a lot of stuff because I just didn't want to keep doing the same role over and over and over again. I didn't realize that that was uh, a blessing to be able to be hired for anything, you know? So. Does anyone else have any questions they'd like to ask? Okay, well, I have a couple more. Uh, Sharon, could you tell us, I, uh, I guess it was really more for me, I'm just curious. Uh, like Raymond Burr is in the movie for, Sorry, Raymond Burr is in the movie for like maybe five minutes, and I was just curious as to like, was he like, was he brought on, uh, was he brought on and then kind of just like dismissed by Dennis or what? Like what was uh, that he, about? He had a big part in this book. It was it was really the script was really kind of about the psychiatrist telling a story about this you know this this dysfunctional family, and Dennis just he took a dislike to Raymond Burr like he would leave for some reason. I mean, he mocked him. He said, "Why? Why is he made up like that? Why is he wearing so much makeup?" And he was in. The, and he, poor Raymond Burr, was saying, "Well, it's Christian Dior, you know." It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, and he just put him out of the film, and he had to have him in the film because uh, we had to have so many Canadians. And the reason it, he, they got thrown out of all the, all the. Uh, you know, Dennis took it to Cannes and everything. He got thrown out of it, it got thrown out of everything because uh, Dennis broke all the rules. You know, he, he didn't have enough Canadians working on the film. He, he just tried to get rid of them constantly. He was, uh, Dennis was a very opinionated person. He was racist. He he was you know he he used the N word and the F word. Those were his two favorite words. <laughs> and, um, you know, but he, he, put, he always said it in a very kind of joking, kind of laid back way. It's always kind of, you know, you find yourself laughing and then ashamed that you laugh and ashamed to go along with kind of thinking, you know. He was a scary person. <laughs> uh, okay. scary. You wouldn't want to, you know, if you were in the war and you were a soldier behind you, you wouldn't want to be behind him because it's just like, you want to like, you know, like, Accidentally kill you, you know. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, I've got one more question. I'll see if anybody else has another one. But uh, I guess so. The movie's uh, you know, 30 years old now. When you, when you first, when it was first made, um, um, what did you think of it? And has your opinion changed a bit over the years in any way? 
Oh, I can't even watch it. <laughs> I can't even watch that. It's just so depressing. It's like so blah. I just, it's just I would rather watch, you know, I want to watch uh, Surgeon, Surgeon Press, you know, Preston Sturgis and, you know, Paula Goddard and Cha Charlie Chaplin. And I don't know. It's like, um, it's, it's just too dark for me. I, I, it's really hard for me to watch my own work. I really, I really don't like to watch any of it. I mean, I have. I, it, it's getting a little easier. It's getting a little easier. But there, I mean, I, I've done, I've done about three things that I like. I did a, I played a rock and roll star in a Janis Joplin kind of role where she was even suing me, and it was on, um, on, a, on a movie of the week type thing. Okay. And I did the Reavers, and um, and the same year I did uh, Marlowe with James Gardner, and all they right. were all different roles. I showed show that I can act, you know. Um, but a lot of my work was because I was a single mom and I was struggling, and um, I take work just just to pay the bill, and I was always able to do that, and. Um, it's like uh, Night of the Comet, uh, which I thought, I thought, I think it's a cute little film. Um, uh, Robert Beltran. I had just finished working with, um, I had done that thing with, um, oh dear, Chuck Norris. I just done the film with Chuck Norris. And Robert Beltran said, hey, there's a cute part in um, Night of the Comet. And your son can be in it too. We can get him in it too. And uh, you know, it's it's not a really big part, but and, you know, I'm really glad I did that role. It was like uh, I got to sock Kelly Maroney, and it was really fun. <laughs> I got to sock somebody like that. All right. Uh, any other questions? No. Okay. Well, Sharon, I want to thank you for doing this Q and A. It was really awesome. And uh, we all really enjoyed the movie. I hope you guys had a good time. I didn't, I didn't, if, if you like that one, you're, you're sure to like Get From Heaven. Yeah, I've never seen that one. I think I drink rat poison at the end of that one. <laughs>